Hi guys, David Campanile here, owner of Campanile Law, located in the great state of New Jersey. Uh, I'm here today to discuss Medicaid Trust Part 2. Um, as always, if you'd like to discuss uh, estate planning, you can contact me at njestateattorney.com. So, in our previous video, we talked about what our Medicaid Trust, how to set them up, but I really want to go into a little bit more detail about them. So, basically, what people want to know is how do... When when I get clients that want to talk about Medicaid trusts, it's it's how does this trust work? How do I get paid? Um, so basically, you're putting everything into what's known as an irrevocable trust. Now, it doesn't it's irrevocable doesn't mean it cannot be destroyed. Basically, what it means is the grantor or you as the individual creating the trust cannot just say the trust is done. You need to go to the beneficiaries and get their approval. And it's a it's a little bit more in depth process. Um, so basically, in a Medicaid trust, you would get all the ordinary income um, that you would be uh, allowed. But remember, if uh, you can't have direct access to this principal, because then it if you have direct access, um, this go becomes countable towards your Medicaid eligibility and. It, Basically, it would be available to almost all other creditors as well. So the other thing is people go, well, if I have a Medicaid trust in this trust and I set it up that, you know, I receive some stuff, I receive my income. And then after my death, uh, the beneficiaries are my children. Does the trust avoid the probate process if it's properly funded? Absolutely. And then it becomes just like a regular um, trust that has been set up. Um, so... There are some ways around. Uh, there are two possible ways to get what we call indirect access to the trust principal. Um, so your trustee maybe uh, has the possibility to uh, distribute any principal of the trust to the beneficiaries, which would be your children. And then um, what would happen is then the beneficiaries could basically – voluntarily give money to uh, or return some of that principal uh, to use for your benefit. Um, and you can't have a prior agreement like this um, that it can be used for your benefit or distributed in this way. The second way basically is for you destroy the trust. Now you get access back to everything. Um, so, um, then the big question becomes what kind of people use a Medicaid trust? Is this anybody in their mid-60s to 80s that has retired? They're worried about these huge astronomical nursing home medical costs and long-term care coverage costs. Um, and it's about protecting these assets that you've worked so hard for for this rainy day. And um, basically... Uh, you you want to know that everything's protected. Um, and then the other question, like I mentioned in my previous video, is, well, why, why don't I just get, why don't people just get long-term care insurance? One, it's too expensive. Two, most people don't qualify for it. Um, or So this is probably the best alternative to purchasing that. It's, pro, it's also cheaper. So we keep that all in, mind, in our mindset as well. Um, the last question for today that I always get, um, that I want to go over today, um, is what assets can go into the, into a Medicaid trust? Well, there are, uh, the main types that fund these are your primary residence. If you have a second vacation home or any secondary residence, any non-mortgaged investment real estate. Um, so that means if you own a rental property and you own it outright, there's no mortgage on it. Um, any non-qualified financial investments, ordinary bank accounts, checking, savings, CDs, and any life insurance policies. Um, you can also create these, um, married couples can create them. Uh, they create joint Medicaid trusts and some create two separate trusts because they want to protect either the marriage as a whole or they're trying to protect everybody uh, separately. There's a lot of considerations that are going to go to that. Um, major ones are whether Contact me at njestateattorney.com. 
Um, and before you use any of the uh, tips, tricks, hints uh, that I've provided to you, please remember to con go consult your attorney um, and speak to them further about your specific situation.